In 1609, Galileo tilted his telescope skyward and brought the heavens into focus. 400 years later, we recognize that the telescope, perhaps more than any other invention, has extended our senses and deepened our understanding of life, the universe, and everything. And when the telescope teamed up with the space program, astronomy really took flight. There's so much we can't see on the surface of the Earth due to the interference of, of our own atmosphere that once we can get above the atmosphere, once we can get away from Earth, we can do a lot more observation. Hubble returned images like no one ever imagined and saw far, far deeper into the universe than we ever have before. But impressive as it was, Hubble's eyesight, its unmatched sensitivity, extended primarily to visible and some ultraviolet wavelengths, which is only a portion of the spectrum. The Herschel telescope, which went up in May, is designed to observe in the infrared, which is very important because there are a lot of regions in space where the temperatures are too low for uh, visible light to radiate. The result of that is stars and bodies in those parts of space are effectively invisible to us. But not for long. Paul Goldsmith is the NASA project scientist for Herschel. Herschel is a very large space telescope. Uh, this is a quarter scale model so that in, in reality, Herschel's mirror is three and a half meters or over 11 feet in diameter, which is a lot bigger than that on the Hubble Space Telescope. In fact, it's the largest mirror ever deployed in space. Launched atop an Ariane 5 rocket by the European Space Agency, the Herschel Space Observatory is named after William Herschel, the German astronomer who discovered infrared light. But what Herschel is uniquely capable of picking up is the radiation from the very coldest objects in the universe. That is, regions in our galaxy and other galaxies that are just beginning to form stars, and they just consist of very cold gas and dust that are only a few degrees themselves above absolute zero. So they don't give off any light. Merely being in Earth orbit, like Hubble, would be insufficient for Herschel's task. It needs to be farther away from our radiating planet. Whereas the Hubble orbits about 350 miles overhead, Herschel is nearly a million miles from Earth, on the opposite side of the planet from the Sun. Being out there gives them the chance of getting to be as cold as they possibly can. And cold is good when you want to pick up these very weak far infrared signals. Herschel will shed light, infrared light, on the formation of stars, solar systems, and galaxies. For the first time, we'll be able to pierce through the surrounding clouds of dust that block out all visible light. It'll be like having ringside seats at the birth of a star. We also, I think, really want to understand how we got here and to understand how our solar system formed. We don't have a time machine. We can't go back four and a half billion years and watch our solar system forming. So the next best thing is to find ones that are doing it right now and by catching different systems at different stages in their evolution, you can hopefully put together a picture of how you go from this cloud of gas and dust to having a star and planets and who knows what else. The Herschel Space Observatory is just beginning its mission. Using devices that Galileo would barely recognize as telescopes, which depend on conditions that can't even exist on Earth. With these tools, with the cold, clear eyes of Herschel, we can go places as far removed from our experience as we can imagine and gain insight into our own origins. For Time.com, I'm Brian Mallow.